I got an email asking me about the unpardonable sin. So what about the unpardonable sin? The quick, quick answer is that there is no sin today that you can commit that will keep you from being eligible to be saved. The only sin that guarantees you a place in hell is dying in rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit convicts you in the sense that he's telling you that you're a sinner in need of a Savior, and you reject that, you're on your way to hell if you keep rejecting that until you die. If you reject it until you die, then you will be put in hell. But if there was a day when you accepted Jesus Christ and believed on him to be your Savior, then you're heaven bound and nothing can change that. The so-called unpardonable sin that men talk about so much today, they get it out of Mark chapter 3. And it isn't a sin that you can commit today as an individual. It can be a, a picture of a lost man's constant rejection of the Holy Spirit. It can be a picture, and that's far as you can take it. But you can apply it to yourself today, doctrinally. For one thing, this took place before Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, and before the New Testament even began. And you say, well, I thought Mark was the New Testament. Well, Mark is in the New Testament, but the Gospels are still technically Old Testament until Jesus Christ dies on the cross. And I believe that because of Hebrews 9.16, for for, uh, where it says, For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. So that verse proves that the New Testament didn't even begin until the death of the testator, the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is reason number one about why this sin doesn't apply to you is because Technically, this isn't even New Testament yet. Jesus Christ hasn't died for the sins of the whole world yet. Now, reason number two is this sin has to do with Israel's rejection of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. That's the context. That's what it has to do with. It has nothing to do with sinners today rejecting Jesus Christ as Savior today. In Mark 3.22, it says, And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, he hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. So the Jews from Jerusalem were accusing Jesus of casting out devils by the power of the devil. And it says, And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong, strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. So what was the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? We'll look at the next verse. It says in Mark 3.30, Because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. So why, how did they blaspheme against the Holy Ghost and be in danger of eternal damnation? It says, Because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. So the sin was saying Jesus Christ had an unclean spirit and not the Holy Spirit. And why was this so bad? Why was this as bad as it was? Because this means they were rejecting Jesus Christ as the Messiah. They didn't believe that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. They didn't think he had the Holy Spirit. They thought he had an unclean spirit. And as long as they stayed in this sin against the Holy Ghost, they would never get forgiveness. As long as Israel rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, which they did, they didn't receive him. They were committing this sin. So the blasphemy challenge that was popular on the internet years ago has nothing to do with this chapter at all. You know, where those people were making those videos saying, I deny the Holy Spirit. And they say, well, this is the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, and I could never be saved now. And, and you know, people turn this into all kinds of other sins. You know, committing certain sins like, an, like a Satanist commits. This has nothing to do with this chapter. Nor does any other sin, people say, is an unpardonable sin that they say is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost and that person now has never forgiveness. Like, 
Many times somebody will say, well, an atheist has probably committed the unpardonable sin and they'll never be able to be saved. You know, people can say that any sin is the unpardonable sin. And they just constantly come up with with new things that's blasphemy and that's an unpardonable sin. But this, this doesn't work. It says in 1 John 2, 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. In Matthew chapter 12, it, it talks about the same event. The Jews were accusing Jesus of casting out devils by the spirit of the devil. This was blasphemy against the Holy Ghost because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. And if Jesus had an unclean spirit and was operating by that unclean spirit, this would prove he wasn't God that he wasn't their Messiah, and that he was a fraud. So they were in rejection of who he was. And in Matthew twelve thirty one through 32, it says, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy for, shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall, ne it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world neither in the world to come. So notice he said in this world and neither in the world to come. This gives us the idea it was a sin that could only be committed when Jesus was present on earth in the flesh, just like he will be in the world to come. That is, in the millennial kingdom. So this sin has to do with the Jews and with the kingdom of heaven, not the church and the kingdom of God. Now, if you've listened to me before, you know that there's... that. There's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of heaven. There's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is a physical kingdom. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. And the sin of that was committed in Matthew 12 and Mark 3 is a sin that has to do with, that can only be committed when Jesus Christ is present on earth in the flesh in that world and in the world to come. Notice he said, in, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Maybe you don't like the interpretation I've given. And I understand, I understand that. So let's just think logically for a minute. Okay, you don't like the explanation I've given on the unpardonable sin. That's completely understandable. Just, just forget it. But just think logically with me for a minute. If there is a sin out there that is unpardonable, if there's a sin out there that would make you uneligible to be saved or make you lose your salvation, then wouldn't that go against everything that Paul wrote to the church in his epistles? Because Paul continuously preached against works playing a part in one's salvation. He said, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. He said, for by grace are you saved through faith and not, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. He said, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So if there is an unpardonable sin that you must have abstain from to stay eligible to get saved or to stay away from to keep salvation, then that's plainly allowing in part your own righteousness to have a part in whether or not you go to heaven or hell. And that's obviously a works-based salvation and you can't get around that because you're allowing abstaining from a certain sin and believing the gospel be the reason why you're saved. You're saved by believing on Jesus Christ, not from abstaining from a certain unpardonable sin. The blasphemy against the Holy Ghost referred to in Mark 3 and Mark 12 has absolutely nothing to do with a born-again believer in the church age, no more than offering animal sacrifices in the Old Testament does. Just think for a minute about it. I know you have heard all your life that if you cuss God or something like that, then you're in, ineligible to be saved because you've committed a blasphemy. You've been told that your whole life, but it isn't true. You know how I know? Because the pattern and example for us today, the Apostle Paul blasphemed the Holy Ghost, and he is presently sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In 1 Timothy 1, 12 and 13, it says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, 
for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So Paul was blaspheming the Holy Ghost back when Jesus Christ was walking this earth in the flesh, back when it was an un unpardonable sin, and he still got saved. Paul lived during more than one dispensation. He lived during the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ and during our present dispensation. He committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, yet he is sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus today. That's because today there's nothing you can commit that will keep you from getting saved if you want to be saved. Even if you, as a lost person, said, I believe Jesus Christ is the devil, that still wouldn't damn you. You can get that sin under the blood when you believe the gospel. You can't just take a verse from the Gospels that took place when Jesus Christ was operating with the kingdom of heaven before Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. You can't just automatically take it for yourself today and apply it doctrinally for yourself. Just like you can't go back in Leviticus and say, well, they're sacrificing animals, so I'm going to go sacrifice animals. But people do that. There is even a church that was in my town years ago that, that read back there in, Le in Leviticus and took verses out of there and they started offering animal sacrifices all because they went back to Leviticus and wrongly applied certain verses to themselves. The same way you can't go back there and add those verses to yourself today is the same way you can't go to the Gospels and add everything there to yourself today when it's obviously in a completely different time period before Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, before the death of the testator. We can certainly get practical application out of it. That is, if a man stays in continuous rejection of the Holy Spirit until he dies, then that is an unpardonable sin because he dies in the rejection of Jesus Christ. We can get application out of it that way. But in context, it's about Israel's rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ as their Messiah. It has nothing to do with people today. It has nothing to do with people in the body of Christ. The only sin a man can commit today is dying. Excuse me. The only unpardonable sin a man can commit today is dying without trusting in Jesus Christ. But as long as there is breath, there is hope. There is no sin he could commit that would make him lose his chance to be saved. The only thing that's going to make you lose your chance to be saved is dying in your unbelief. Then you're done. But I hope this has helped some people about the subject of the unpardonable sin.